Good morning, Fountain of Life. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, before we get into worship, I wanted to encourage us with a scripture. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. I love that the emphasis of the scripture isn't on what we've received, uh, but the reason we've received it, which is to share it with those around us. So even though we're in our living rooms with our coffees, we can sing loud enough for our neighbors to hear. So why don't you lift your voice with me, clap your hands. We are here to give God praise. We are here to give him excellence. Let's give him worship this morning.
Hey everybody, we're going to be reading some scripture together. So if you'll open up to Zechariah chapter 9, starting in verse 9. If you have a physical Bible, feel free to grab that, or maybe you have an app on your phone. If you don't have either of those things on the lower part of your screen, all of the scriptures will appear there. So starting in Zechariah chapter 9 in verse 9, it says this. It says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious. Yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. I will remove the battle chariots from Israel and the war horse from Jerusalem. I will destroy all the weapons used in battle, and your king will bring peace to the nations. His realm will stretch from sea to sea and from the Euphrates to the ends of the earth. Because of the covenant I made with you sealed with blood, I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless dungeon. Come back to the place of safety, and all you prisoners will still have hope. I promise this day, this very day, that I will repay two blessings for each of your trouble. Skipping down to verse 16, it says this, On that day, the Lord their God will rescue his people, just as a shepherd rescues his sheep. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that you are the good shepherd, that you protect us, that you take care of us, Lord God. And we thank you so much that you promise that you will give us two blessings for every trouble that we were in, Lord. God, I pray wherever anyone is, Lord God, in their home or elsewhere, God, that you will have your protection on them, Lord God. You will bring them peace in this situation. We love you. We thank you. And we pray all these things in your powerful and holy name. Amen. Hello, friends. It's so good to be with you on this Palm Sunday. Pastor Matt is with me as well. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful spring day. The smell of fresh cut grass is... (laughs) Finally. (laughs) Is outside. Yeah, finally, finally. But we're, we're glad that you're with us today. A big welcome to our Fountain family. And then beyond, so many people are watching. Pastor Matt, we're having people watch us from Skagway, Alaska. All over the place. uh, Friends in Bangladesh, people in Texas, around the country and around the world. That's really cool. And so we want to welcome more than just our Fountain family. We are glad all of you are with us to help us celebrate with you on this Palm Sunday. You know, this is Easter week, and uh, I've asked Pastor Matt to join me. We're a little bit, we got a little distancing going on. That's (laughs) right. Don't get too close, brother. That's right. Um, and so Pastor Matt's going to just share some ways you can stay connected. I know we, we're not gathering under one roof right now, but just because we're, Pastor Matt, just because we're social distancing uh, doesn't mean we're spiritually secluded. That's right. We can still stay connected. Pastor Matt's going to give you some ways uh, that we can stay connected and also some things that are upcoming uh, this Easter week. That's right. So go ahead, bro. So as always, if you're not following us on Instagram, at uh, Fountain of Life Center, do that right now. It's a great way to stay in touch. Um, and it's a great way for us to stay in contact with you as well. Uh, so do that right now. If not, www.flcnj.org is a great way to stay in touch with what we're doing here. It's a great resource for you to find out uh, all the campus happenings here or whether it's a ministry that's going live or whatever it might be, flcnj.org is your first stop. Uh, as always, too, they can always call the office. There will be right. somebody to feel the call from you. Just because our campus is shut down doesn't mean that no one's manning the phones. If you need That's right. something, That's right. Good please point. reach out to us. 609-499-2131. Again, 609-499-2131. And someone will respond to your call as soon as always, possible. Always. Somebody is answering the phone. And so since everybody's on Facebook, they can just hit the share right now? Yeah, they can hit like and share. It's a great way, again, to stay in touch with what we're doing. And then a great way for us to stay in touch with you. Great. Also, you'll be able to share uh, the service today with your friends, and uh, I know they're going to want to hear the message along with you. So here we are, Easter week. Yeah, already. uh, Pastor Matt, why don't you share with them what's happening this week? For sure. So uh, later on tonight at 5.30, our Life Kids Juniors, which is our four and five-year-olds, are going to go on YouTube, and uh, they have a media presentation, so you're not going to want to miss that. Here's how you do that. If you don't have the YouTube app, you can download it. Or you can just go to www.youtube.com slash lifekidsfolc. Okay. Lifekidsfolc. And you can watch that media presentation at 5.30 for our four and five-year-olds. And then Life Kids Elementary is going again at 6 p.m. Okay. So not only something for our little ones, but for our 
bigger little ones. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so 5.30 and 6 p.m. this evening. That's Life Kids FOLC on YouTube. You're going to want to check that out. We've had some really good reports, too, about uh, kids that have been connecting. Yeah, man. Some really cool testimonies of how kids are connecting with the media. Yeah. It's a great way to see that they're still getting ministered to and yeah. uh, as us as well as adults. You know, as we said before, uh, the church might be, uh, the building might be closed, but uh, the church is still moving forward. Amen. And so thanks for being here, Pastor Matt. Uh, My pleasure. Today. And uh, now the source, uh, a little bit of what, what's happening with the source. I know you sure. aren't meeting together like we aren't, but I think you've got something coming up for them as well. That's right. So Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we're going to be launching a video for them as well. And that will be up on our Facebook um, as well as on the right. website. So make sure you guys um, stay on the lookout for that. That's Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And the reason why we're releasing it Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our students uh, is because we're not doing anything midweek for our you know, general congregation, Good which point. we have been doing for the last two weeks, which we hope you guys have been connecting with us at Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Um, there's different material and services going out online for that. But since we're not meeting this Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we're actually meeting for Good Friday. Good Friday, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. And that's going to be a short word of encouragement to you, and as well as a focus on prayer live. Yes. So we're going to yes. pray yes. together live. Even though mm -hmm. uh, we're separated, the Holy Spirit is still you know, connecting all of us, and it's a great way for um, you to submit a prayer request at that time. Absolutely. And we can pray live for you. Yes, yes. You'll be able to submit it live, your prayer request, also on our website. Yeah. Uh, there's a place you can go and submit your prayer request as well. Anytime. Yeah, not Anytime. just that time, but... Anytime. Again, the, the website, flcnj.org, is a great resource just to stay in touch with what we're doing because so much has shifted. It is. <laughs> and, and honestly, from a pastor's heart, and I know Pastor Russ and the rest of the pastoral staff and team, thank you guys for being flexible because we know yeah. that uh, things have changed. But uh, with the change comes new opportunities to, to grow and to give and to serve and to pray. So, so true. we hope that you're connecting that way. So true. We're so glad that you're with us today. We really do appreciate your attendance here. And uh, we want to talk just a brief moment about how you can give as well. Sure. Um, you know, Pastor Matt, um, some people have had to take pay cuts with Big what's time. going on. Yeah. Some businesses have slowed down or closed. Some people have been laid off. And, uh, but yet... Um, I just want to say thank you again, as I do each week, uh, for your faithfulness in giving. And, uh, you know, and, and everybody may not be able to give as much as you did before. And, and we understand that. It, it's about all of us doing something. There, there's, a, there's a great account in 1 Kings chapter 17, you remember it well, where Elijah was sent to a widow. And uh, when he arrived, she was uh, collecting a few sticks to make a small fire, and she was going to make a cake for the her last and her meal. son. The last meal, yeah. And then they were going to die. Uh, that was a famine in the land. And, and Elijah, Elijah said to the widow, he says, uh, would you go fetch me some water? And she went quickly. Yeah. And then he said, because that was the easy part. And then he said, could you make me a little cake as well? And that's when she paused and says, I'm sorry. I got a handful of meal, a little bit of oil in a jar. I'm going to make one more cake. My son and I are going to eat it. And then we're going to die. He says, go do like you said. But make me a little cake first. In other words, even though things are scarce, yeah. even though there's not as much as you had before, yeah. still put the kingdom of God first. What a tough test. Ah, what a tough test. Mind-blowing. Yeah. Mind-blowing. But she went and did exactly what the prophet said, and she made a little cake, and she brought it to Elijah. And the end of the story is, <laughs> as long as that famine lasted, her barrel of meal... And that cruise of oil never went dry. God has got a way Amen. to make a way out of no way yeah. and provide for us. So we want to encourage you to give. And just one more time, I'm going to pitch it to Pastor Matt. Let the folks know how they can give. And then if you would ask God's blessing. My pleasure. On them for giving. So easy ways to give, flcnj.org slash give. You know, give as you're able to. We know that everybody's... Uh, you know, paychecks have shifted around a bit and their priorities bit. have a shifted as well. Um, but thank you for, for helping us continue the mission here. flcnj.org slash give. You can also give online on the app. That's right. The app is a That's great right. way to stay connected and a simple way to give. Uh, you can just look up Fountain of Life Center app, and that's on the Google Play Store as well as the App Store on uh, Apple. So 
They can do Man, that. Man, you just know what you're talking about when it comes to social media. <laughs> I had to live it. My, my teenagers would crucify me if I didn't. Um, and then lastly, the way you can give to is um, you can simply mail something in. Stamp still works. Stamp still works. And if that's the way that you, you know, trust your money to do it, that's completely fine with us. And our address to mail it to. Yeah, 2035 Columbus Road, Burlington, New Jersey, uh, zip code 08016. Great. Let's pray and ask God to bless the folks as they give. God, I thank you for this opportunity to give. We know that uh, you are the one who gives seed to the sower. So today as we prepare our hearts to give, would you place in our hands something to give? Lord, we know that uh, right now the, the timeline for people's paychecks to come in may have already been halted. Lord, they might be depending uh, on a miracle for themselves. But just like the widow who was preparing the meal for the prophet, Lord, would you, Thank you Jesus. prepare a meal for us to eat and Thank for you, others Lord. to eat Thank you, Lord. through the hands of the fountain of life? Yes, Lord. God, and help the fountain of life to have creative ways to give back to our community during this time. We pray that your Holy Spirit will bless the seed and multiply it. Yes, Lord, God. let it grow into great fruit. Thank you, let Jesus. it benefit those around us, around the corner, and around the world. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome again, everybody, to Palm Sunday. Uh, here we are at the Fountain of Life, and I just got to say, it's a, it's a joy to be able to connect with you, even though you may be in your living room, and, and here I am at, at the church, but I'm really thankful to God that we have this way, this means to connect together. And I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit can touch us no matter where we are. Aren't you glad that God isn't locked up in the building? I am. I know that for sure. So Palm Sunday may not have looked like we expected it to look. There's no palms to wave, but I want to tell you, we can still celebrate Palm Sunday. You know, Palm Sunday was a great celebration. Uh, you've heard Pastor Ruben, he read the prophecy of it. Uh, nearly two million people gathered there as they were celebrating the Passover. People lined the streets and, and they were waving palm branches and laying their clothes in the path of Jesus, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest heavens, they were singing. Hosanna means save now. But I got to tell you, the people on that first Palm Sunday, even though it looks to be a joyous occasion, they were really in a crisis at that time, like all of us are. In fact, I want to title the message today, Celebrating in Crisis. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? How can we celebrate in a time of crisis? But I, I got to tell you, the scriptures are full of the people of God celebrating, praising God, worshiping God even in the very most difficult days of their life. I'll admit, celebrating in a time of crisis is easier taught than caught. Uh, certainly easier said than done. Our whole world feels broken right now. There's panic and there's worry and there's unemployment, uh, highest ever people filing for unemployment. I think it's one of the most difficult storms this nation, any of us, even the whole globe has ever faced. And I want to talk to some people today who, who love God, but you're in a tough place, a difficult place, a hard place, maybe even a, you'd call it a pressing place. And when I just opened up and said celebrating in the crisis, you might have almost tuned me out because you may be wondering, well, how do I celebrate in a time of crisis? Some of you may, may be asking, well, how do, I, how do I praise God when I just got laid off or my my business is closed and I've had to lay people off and I'm seeing my savings be depleted. How do we praise? What is there to celebrate? Well, I want to take you back to the first Palm Sunday. Uh, and again, it looks like a real joyous parade, and it was. But the people of God were in a very, very difficult crisis at the time. I want to take you there. Um, the Roman Empire had invaded Judah and made it its own province. Now the people of God, the Jewish people were under the severe oppression of the Roman people, overtaxed 
experiencing just random acts of violence. At times, some of the Jewish people would rise up and, and try to fight against the Roman soldiers and they would be met with severe violence. Just out of nowhere, innocent people, innocent people would suffer violence at the hand of the Romans. You may have remember when Jesus said, if, a, if you're compelled to go a mile, then go two. Uh, the Roman soldiers would just pull a Jewish person out of the crowd and say, here, carry my gear for me. And that's when Jesus said, if, if they ask you to carry it a mile, carry it too. It was that kind of oppression, overtax, oppress, violent acts against the people of God. They really had no reason to praise. They were under a constant state of threat, worrying how they were going to pay the next tax increase. Uh, it, it was chaos. And in the midst of this cultural chaos, a carpenter comes riding in on a donkey to celebrate the Passover. Estimated about two million people there. And even in a time of crisis, they'd all come to celebrate Passover in the crisis. Think about it. Stories had already made it to Jerusalem about this street preacher, this miracle worker, this blind man healer. Could he be the Messiah? Could he be the savior that we've been looking for? Could he be the, the one who would deliver us from all this oppression? So they went out to meet him, hoping he would be the answer to their deepest need. And I want to take you to Matthew chapter 21, beginning reading with verse 8. Here's what it says. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. <clears throat> The crowds had went ahead of him. Those that follow shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. And they asked this question, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. <laughs> so here the people were praising this Jesus who had come riding in on a donkey. Uh, they could have said, we have no reason to praise God. We have no reason to, to shout, life isn't fair. Where's God in this pathetic mess we're in? But they made a choice in the middle of their crisis to celebrate. Something about hope in Jesus and the presence of Jesus that changes the atmosphere. What were they celebrating? They were celebrating the hope of the Messiah. They were celebrating the hope of salvation. They were celebrating the hope of deliverance. And it was this celebration, this praise, that brought them out of their depressed state of mind. Think about it. Before they started celebrating this Jesus, who knows what kind of funk they were in and talking about the oppression of Rome. And I don't know if we can take this any longer. We're not going to be able to pay the next tax. And, and, and I'm afraid to go to the store because the last time we went, uh, we were beaten they were, oh, they were in crisis, all right. But something about the presence of Jesus that brought them out of that depressed state and out into the open air, and they began to sing Hosanna, which means save now. Wow. Got to tell you, this wasn't the first time the people of God celebrated in a crisis. Could I take you back just a bit to the first Passover? In the Old Testament, we talked about it a little bit last week when they were at the Red Sea, but before they got to the Red Sea, they had experienced many plagues in Egypt, 10 of them. The last plague, I think many of you remember, <clears throat> was the death angel. And so here's what God did. <laughs> he quarantined all of, of the house of Israel. He quarantined them in their houses, and he had them put lamb's blood on their doorpost. Here's what the 10th plague was. God told Moses to tell the people that at midnight, the death angel was going to come through Egypt land and the firstborn of every house would die. Not just the firstborn of humans, the firstborn of every animal, donkeys, cattle, camels, the firstborn of every human and every animal would die. So God told Moses, tell the people to do this. Take a lamb of the first year, a perfect lamb without blemish. Watch, this would be a beautiful picture of Jesus. Take a lamb and slay the lamb and then take the blood of that lamb and put it on the doorpost of your house. Let me take you there. It's Exodus chapter 12, just a few verses. Here's what it says. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood of the basin and put 
some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the doorpost. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. Sounds like a quarantine to me. <laughs> you think this was the first quarantine? No, no. God quarantined him, said, don't come out of your house. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the doorpost and will pass over that doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. And verse 24, you shall observe this thing as an ordinance to Passover for you and your sons forever. Think about it. Think about it. They were quarantined, just like a lot of us are. They were quarantined. But even though there was death all around them, because the Bible says there was not one house where there was not one dead, except for those homes, those houses that had the blood of a spotless lamb on the doorpost of their house. God said, when the death angel comes through, when I see the blood of that lamb, I will pass over you and death won't touch you. But here's the great part about this. Even though there was death all around them, you talk about a crisis, there was death everywhere. The people of God were celebrating the Passover inside their house. I'm here to tell you that no matter how bleak it looks on the outside, the rising death tolls, the number of coronavirus cases, we can celebrate, we can celebrate Jesus. He is with us. The blood of that lamb was on their doorpost. And everyone who has put their faith in Jesus Christ has the blood of the Savior, the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Lamb of God on the doorpost of our house. Wow, in the middle of death everywhere, they were celebrating. They were eating the Passover. And you know what I love about it? The Bible says they ate it standing up because God told them, eat it with your belt on, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. In other words, I'm about to bring you into a whole new day. Wow, celebrating. And I'm going to tell you, everybody, that with coronavirus cases rising and even the death toll rising, we can still celebrate Jesus. He is with us. What about us? What do we have to celebrate? Well, they were celebrating the hope of the Messiah. We are celebrating on this Palm Sunday. We are celebrating the person of Jesus. They didn't know when the Messiah was coming. Oh, friends, I got to just stop right here and tell you that if they could celebrate the hope of the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah, how much more should we celebrate knowing who the Messiah is? He is Jesus. We're not wondering who he is. We know him. They were celebrating the hope of the Messiah. In the middle of their crisis, the threat of violence every day, the threat of oppression and taxation, they still celebrated the hope of the Messiah. If they could celebrate the hope of the Messiah, we can celebrate the person of Jesus. They said that day, asked the question, who is this? This is Jesus, friends. This is Jesus, the one who loves you. This is Jesus, that's who this is. The one who came to rescue us. This is Jesus, the Savior, the healer, the healer of the brokenhearted. This is Jesus, the one who not only saves and heals, but he provides for us as well. This is Jesus, your present help in a time of trouble. This is Jesus. And there's one of my favorite verses in the whole New Testament in Colossians. It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Passover <laughs> was just a picture of Jesus. The blood on the doorpost was just a picture of the blood of the Lamb of God. They were hoping for salvation, hoping for deliverance. We possess the Savior. I'll tell you, I, I don't care what's going on outside. I don't care what's happening around me. I've made up my mind. I'm going to celebrate the person of Jesus Christ in my life. Do I know what the future holds? No. Do I know if the coronavirus or will, will, will get close or touch my family? I don't know. Jesus never promised us exemption from trouble or sickness or even disease. I am celebrating Jesus, though. I am not 
going to sit and watch the news 24-7 and buy into fear, panic, and worry. I have Christ. Oh, I, I hope I don't jump out of my chair like I almost did last week. I have Christ. I have the Messiah. You have the Messiah, the person of Jesus. I'm celebrating this Palm Sunday just like they did. They had crisis everywhere on that first Palm Sunday. I know all we ever hear about is palm waving and, and the singing Hosanna. But if you pull the curtain back on that first Palm Sunday, those people were living under the constant threat of violence, the constant threat of taxation, constant oppression. And yet in the presence of Jesus, the hope that he would be the Messiah, they sang praises all day long. What are we celebrating today? in crisis, and we're all in crisis, everywhere around us, quarantined in our houses, can't go out except for just the bare essentials. But we have a reason to celebrate. We have the person of Jesus. They celebrated the hope of salvation. We're celebrating the perfected plan of salvation. You gotta say amen to that. They, they were hoping, Hosanna means save now. Hosanna in the highest heavens. They were hoping for salvation, but we are not hoping. We possess the Savior. We have salvation. This Jesus who rode in the city on a donkey on that first Palm Sunday, five days later, he would die on an old rugged cross to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin. I can say today I'm saved. I love the New Testament. Paul talks about we have been saved. We are being saved. And one day we will be saved from this sin benign planet. Thank God Almighty. They were celebrating on that first Palm Sunday the hope of salvation. Today we're celebrating the perfected plan of salvation. I was lost and he found me. My soul was sick with sin and he saved me. I was drowning in despair and he delivered me. Oh friends, I just think today if they could celebrate hoping for the Messiah. If they could celebrate hoping for salvation, how much more today? Because we possess what they were only hoping for. Wow. The last one, they were celebrating the hope of deliverance. We hope that he'll be our deliverer. We are celebrating the promised deliverance. We have been delivered from sin, from death, from hell. My God, my God, we're celebrating. They were hoping for deliverance, but I can say today, I have been delivered. If I die before I wake, I know the Lord, my soul will take. I've been delivered from the penalty of sin. I have Christ, and I have every reason to celebrate. I, stop, I gotta just encourage you right here. Stop uh, just complaining and worrying and whining about everything that's happening. Brothers and sisters, we can celebrate in the crisis. Go ahead and just whisper an amen right there on your couch. If they could celebrate then, wow, we have what they were hoping for. Isaiah 61 3 says, we have been given the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen to that. We have the garment of praise. When, could I just encourage you, when you start to get heavy, and I know, even though this thing hasn't really touched me, it's touched people very close to me. A pastor friend of mine shared with me this week, two people died up in North Jersey. Two of his faithful members died in his church. When this thing starts to get heavy and you get the layoff notice or there's been a pay cut, when this thing gets heavy, we can either crumble under the weight of it or we can do what Isaiah said, we've been given the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. There's something about worship that helps quiet our worry. Sometimes you just gotta praise your way out of stuff. Sorry, you, you saying, Pastor Russ, in the middle of a pandemic I should sing? <laughs> in the middle of my trial I should worship and sing? In the middle of the crisis I should sing? No, I'm not saying that. God is saying that. He said, I've given you something for that spirit of heaviness, it's the garment of praise. There is something I don't know, something supernatural about just beginning to worship that relieves us from that spirit of heaviness. Wow. We cannot let the crisis silence our song. 
Can I say it again? We cannot let the crisis silence our song. COVID-19, it can stop your movement, but it can't silence your song. COVID-19, it may have you quarantined, but it cannot quiet your praise. I heard one time, while you're waiting for the next door to open, praise him in the hallway. Can I get an amen to that? Worship always prevails over worry. On that first Palm Sunday, they praised and they worshiped and they celebrated, expecting the Messiah, expecting salvation, hoping for and expecting deliverance. But what they hoped for, we possess today in the person of Jesus. The plan of salvation has been finished. He died, he was buried, he rose again. The finished work has been accomplished. We can celebrate that. And we're not hoping for deliverance. We've been delivered. We praise. They praised out of looking forward. We praise because we look back. The cross, the empty grave, and we will celebrate the empty grave big time next week. I want to close now. I'm going to pitch it to Pastor David and the team. They're going to sing a song. I've asked them to sing a song called All Hail King Jesus. And I want you to sing along right there in your living room. The words are going to be right there on the lower part of your screen. And, and when we come back, Luann, my wife, is going to join me and we're going to celebrate communion together. So I hope you have some grape juice or some bread. If not, anything will do. It's not the elements that count so much as the person we're remembering and all that he's accomplished for us, I want you to know we have a reason to celebrate in the crisis. I hope you're blessed by this song. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Oh, hail the Savior of the world. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Savior.
Jesus. Oh, hail the Savior of the world. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Jesus. church. I love that song. Before Pastor Russ and Luann come to lead us uh, in communion today, uh, I can't think of a better way to celebrate in crisis than by declaring the lordship of Jesus over ourselves. Um, Romans 10 9 says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if we believe in our hearts that he rose from the dead, uh, that we are saved. It's as simple as that. That is the gift of salvation that God has extended to you and me. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer real quick. There's nothing special about the prayer or what I'm saying. It has everything to do with our obedience to scripture and the calling of God in this moment. So if you want to raise your hands with me right now, whether you're in your kitchen, your living room, your pajamas, it doesn't matter. Let's just pray this together and let's believe uh, for the best that is to come through Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I praise you. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you are Savior and Lord. I believe that you have defeated death and hell and that you've been raised uh, back to life. I believe that you have saved me from my sin, that you've cleansed me from all unrighteousness. And I declare you Lord and Savior of my life today. I praise you. I thank you. And I seal this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen and amen. Be blessed today, church. Pastor Russell and Luann are going to come lead us in communion. You have a great day. Oh, what a beautiful song. All hail King Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth. You know, that's a great, a great song to kind of help us bring our service to a close today because Jesus is bigger and greater than anything going on in this world right now. Yes bigger than coronavirus. Uh, All hail King Jesus. He's Lord of heaven and earth, and he's the Lord of our lives. I've been looking forward to this, and we shared last Sunday that uh, Luann and I wanted to have communion with you. We just came out of the the message. Luann was here. She was my only congregant (laughs) today. We don't have to social distance because we live together. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Just her and the cameraman here, and uh, you heard the message celebrating even in times of crisis. We have so much uh, to celebrate for. And um, before we go to communion, just uh, I want you to share just a really recent time that you know you heard some news of a crisis situation, what you did. Um, well, I got a phone call. Uh, it was a very difficult situation. Someone was in and somebody dear to us and I put the worship on from last Sunday service, I put it on the TV, <laughs> started watching it again, just praising in my living room and kitchen and pace back and forth and then began to pray and then watch the worship again and kept praising until I felt the burden lift and just felt a shift in the atmosphere. And I got the call today that everything came out okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, the when, when, when you get a call and it just looks bad and all signs, all signs pointed to disaster. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. A crisis. And how many times are we just, is it easy to throw our hands in the air and say, oh, it's not yes. fair, God. You know, it's so easy to, to get into despair yeah. and depression, yeah. especially in the middle of a crisis. Yes. And, and we're really not at liberty to share more than that, but, no. but I know the background of this situation and the heartache that it was causing Luann and me. Mm-hmm. And uh, so rather than to you know, retreat into depression mm-hmm. and despair, you cranked it up from last week. I did, <laughs> I played it over and over and it was so encouraging and it really just lifted my heart. There's something about the person of Jesus and the presence of Jesus yeah. that changes the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. 
It changes the atmosphere. And then today, you know, the call came and uh, we just rejoiced. We just rejoiced in, in the goodness of the Lord. And, and I don't know what crisis you might be in, friends. And, and I know, I said at the beginning of my message, you know, this celebrating in a time of crisis is easier said than done, yes. easier taught than caught. But I gotta tell you, God has given us a garment of praise mm -hmm. for the spirit of heaviness. Um, I don't want to preach all over again, but I, I'm, we, we rejoice in that. And, and I want to encourage you, even in this crisis, even when it looks so bleak, the end is near, you can't connect the dots. Let's remember who Jesus is and celebrate him. As we get ready to take communion, uh, I'm asked Luann to read a couple of verses for us, but right before she does, my message was about the first Palm Sunday. And then four days later, uh, Jesus would celebrate the Last Supper. And he would, after the Last Supper, he would be betrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. You wanna talk about a crisis that Jesus was in? I mean, the Bible said he was praying to the Father, if, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. Um, in other words, I, I, the, the human in me doesn't wanna go through with this. And then Judas betrays him with a kiss. And um, you talk about a crisis. He prayed in such agony that the, the vessels, the blood vessels in his forehead popped and he began to sweat drops of blood. You talk about a crisis. But because he loved you and because he loved me, because he would complete the plan of salvation and the great deliverance he would bring us from our own sin, Jesus stayed the course. He stayed the course. And before Gethsemane, right before he went through that most difficult time in his life on earth, he broke bread with his disciples, drank the wine together, and then he told them uh, some very interesting things. Go ahead and read the scripture. Uh, Matthew 26, 26 through 28. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Thank God. He said this is, he gave him the bread. I, can't you just see Jesus breaking the bread and passing it around? This is my body, which is broken for you. He was broken so that our broken life could be put back together again. And then he said, take the cup as well. Yes. And a final verse, what Jesus instructed us in 1 Corinthians, what did he say? Uh, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So we, that's what we want to do right now. We're just going to pray and give thanks here in, in a moment. I hope you have found some elements there, some crackers, or if you can't find grape juice, orange juice, whatever works. But, but uh, these emblems represent the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus. And uh, we just want to pray and give thanks. Yes. Gracious Father, Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for the love of God that has rescued us, saved us, given us a hope and a future, cleansed us from our sin, delivered us from so great a spiritual death. Thank you that the blood of Christ has been applied to our hearts. Thank you for saving grace. Thank you for your sacrifice, Jesus. And today we eat this bread as a church family. We eat the bread remembering your broken body. We drink the cup remembering you shed your blood that we might have the full forgiveness of our sins. I thank you for it as we eat the Lord's Supper together. Let me break and share with you. Let's eat the bread and drink the cup together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that we can celebrate you even in the crisis. In the middle of this crisis, we can pause and celebrate Jesus. Let's drink the cup as well. Praise be to God, our Father. In the middle of the crisis, here we are celebrating Jesus. Let me encourage you to continue to celebrate. And as what Luann shared with you a moment ago, when the crisis gets close to you, 
worship and celebrate Christ. I want to leave you with a closing blessing. The Lord led me to this scripture to, to leave it with you today. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. We'll see you next time.